Welcome to video case study number 12, and this is bracketed panels. What I did in this original um, capture was I bracketed five exposures uh, for each scene. So every single frame had five exposures. I've gone back in here and I am happy to use two of those, one for the foreground and one for the sky. It's going to be pretty simple to blend these two together. So what I am going to demonstrate is using a program called Auto Panel Pro to, um, to do these things, uh, to blend these together. Now, as with other panels, or sorry, other blended exposures, what I'm going to do is select the, well, let's start by correcting our usual. So if I select all the frames and do my normal sharpen and chromatic aberration preset, which is again the one I always use. And if I then go and uh, deselect all and then go in and select my shadow or my darker sky exposures. There's a lot of these. It was a big panel. So I've selected 13 of my 26 frames and let's just open up some of these shadows a little without creating a halo. We can probably increase that exposure just a little bit. And we'll just watch that. As soon as you start seeing a halo arriving here, you know you're in trouble. And that way, we're just bringing out a little bit of that shadow detail. Now let's go through and do the opposite by selecting our foreground exposures, which are the brighter of the sets. And again, I want to just control, I think I'm going to do that with gentle grad just tone that down a wee wee bit to make sure that blended area is going to be a wee bit easier and sync those settings now what i didn't do on the previous one was synchronize those settings so i just need to go through and select the shadow ones again because I made the adjustments to the first frame but I didn't synchronize across the, the other frames so now we can see these ones are popping into place. Now we want to select all these frames and Auto Panel Pro will not deal with RAW files, you have to deal with TIFFs. So what I'm going to do in the first stage is export and I have a file called Panel Exports. So I'm going to choose that file and create a new folder within there called Mountain HDR Panel. Choose that file. I'm going to export them as TIFFs because we want a high quality file. I'm not going to resize, I'm just going to sharpen for screen. So I'm going to start exporting those 26 files, which will take some time. So we will pick up the video at the point where we have those files ready to move into AutoPano Pro. Now, AutoPano Pro is a piece of software I've been using for well over a decade, and it allows uh, some fairly sophisticated um, ways of blending different exposures. Now, I have got a a file in here, Mountain HDR panel, and in there I have my 26 files. So I am going to open that up and it will auto detect any panels that are in there. So the first thing which will happen should be, yep, that we, the auto panel, I mean, we're dealing with large numbers of TIFF files here, so it is, it is having to crunch uh, the numbers a wee bit here. 
but what it will do is go in there and auto detect panoramic images. So even though there are bracketed exposures in there, it will load all those 26 frames into its, into its program and show us exactly what we have in that folder. And here we have it. It says there are 26 images. The focal length was 50 millimeters with shutter speeds between a 13th and 3 fifths of a second. F13 tells you what time it was taken. And it told you the total duration of how long it took you to uh, produce that panorama. When you go to auto detect, it is going to do a preliminary stitch uh, to join all these frames together and it actually blends the two exposures in the process. Um, it has a built-in HDR capacity, so it will make an attempt to look at the, the, the foreground image for, the, for the, the brighter foreground, and it will look at the sky image for the better exposed sky. So, on the right hand of the screen in a moment, we will see a composite of the two exposures. And we have the option, should we wish, to export that file as, a, as an HDR image, you know, having allowed the, the computer to, to make its, its decisions. And if we open that up, we see it's done a really amazing job. We have a brighter foreground, we have a darker sky, and you know it really has made an exceptional, an exceptional job. I was using a panel head, so they've stitched really clean, there's very little distortion. But one of the beauties of this piece of software is you can group by speed. And if we, we now have two groups, two layers within here. So when I go into um, render, I can say render it as a TIFF 16 bit with no compression at 300 dpi, and that will get saved to my desktop. So that is going to, to render two. Uh, I'm going to tick layers. Yep, there we go. Tick layers, and that shows that the two uh, shutter speed images will get produced. Now, again, this takes a wee while. Uh, I saw there that we've got uh, 33,000 pixels in terms of our width, so it is a real monster panel. So we'll let that do its thing, and we'll pick up the video again with the, the two layers in Photoshop, because we're going to blend these manually. Welcome back. We have now produced our two different files and I have brought them into Photoshop and we have the brighter foreground exposure on the bottom and the darker sky exposure on the top. I've actually resized these down from 33,000 pixels down to about 15,000 pixels just because the size of them was just far too uh, great to be to be playing around with um, you know the video was just taking forever so I have gone in here and with the dark sky layer on top of the foreground layer I've used the quick selection tool which is our default selection method to produce a very very loose mask around the top of this um, sky and I'm just going to click the quick mask button and we now have the darker sky on that foreground. Now, that of course looks quite unnatural because the transition is so abrupt. Now, what I'm gonna show you here is a, a really quite a slick technique to make that look a little bit more natural. I'm creating a group and dragging the top layer into the group, then adding another mask and using the gradient tool with white at the top and black at the bottom to produce a gradient that is significantly smoother. There's a couple of areas that are a little dodgy, and what I'm gonna do is go back to the original mask with a white brush at a reasonable opacity, something like 30, 
30% and 35, 40% flow. And I'm just going to darken along that horizon line a little. And what that's doing is it's just picking up some of those highlighty areas, some of those brighter spots between the two files and producing something that looks the spot. And if I use the zoom tool, we can now see we have a perfect blend between a dark sky and a paler, brighter foreground. I'm calling this a seascape because that's the sea over there. It's looking up the northwest of Scotland from the top of a hill called Stack Polly. So I'm just going to uh, bring that down a touch to get rid of the, the black area of sky, pull that in a touch on the left, pull it up a touch on the bottom, and that should be just about us. Um, I think it might need a tiny touch on the right hand side as well. And here we have a file that is just gigantic. I mean, before I before I um, cropped it, uh, before I resized it, it was over 33,000 pixels wide, which is just simply gigantic. So I'm just going to um, flatten that file and we now have our giant HDR panel. And by HDR, I mean exposure blended. We have a dark exposure for the sky, a paler exposure for the foreground. Um, and there we have it. That's the end of case study 12.